Hi everybody, we are back for part two of this jewelry haul. And before we get into it, I did wanna share this beautiful piece of jewelry that I just got in the mail. And this is from a fellow YouTuber. And this is actually her channel name right here, Fleurs de Montaigne. Um, and her name is Hannah. She has a fabulous channel here on YouTube. She has a lot of knowledge about vintage and antique jewelry specifically vintage and antique glass jewelry. So she has some wonderful videos on her channel. I'm gonna link it down in the description because she is very, very kind, very knowledgeable, and you should absolutely check her videos out. Um, and on top of that, she's also incredibly talented and she makes jewelry. So she upcycles pieces of vintage and antique jewelry. If you're a jewelry collector and you buy things in lots, you know that you find damaged pieces that have really good parts and elements and I love that she takes those pieces and makes something new and beautiful with them. So this is the box that I got in the mail and look at this beautiful necklace. So Hannah did a video recently, oh my gosh this is so beautiful, she did a video recently sharing some of her really beautiful upcycled creations and she asked everyone to leave her a comment and that would enter you um, into a drawing to potentially win one of her pieces. And I somehow was the lucky winner. And this just arrived and this is so gorgeous. Oh my gosh, so these are all vintage elements. So look at this beautiful butterfly here with these beautiful rhinestones and these glass pieces. Oh, oh this is gorgeous. look at how beautiful and so she hand wired all of these pieces together um this is gorgeous she even has her own hang tag which i love that's just a beautiful little touch to the piece so thank you so much hannah this is absolutely gorgeous i'm going to treasure this i'm actually going out tonight and i think i'm going to wear this um so if i do i'm gonna i'll share a picture with you but this is so so beautiful um if you like vintage and antique pieces and upcycled jewelry, uh, definitely check her out. I think she has an Etsy shop as well. So I'm gonna link her channel down in the description. Thank you so much. This is absolutely beautiful. I love it. So I did share, we're gonna move on to the bracelet tray now. And I did share this Bakelite bracelet with you um, on my last video. And I mentioned that I thought that this piece came off of this, um, but now that I, I was looking up images of this bracelet and I only see it with these five charms. So I don't know, it looks to me like this could be a part of this bracelet, but it might not. I do think this is Bakelite though. So I just thought I would mention that. Next we have this really adorable expandable bracelet. And this one is actually marked Sterling right over here. And it does have a personalization here. Anne M. Olivia, Burbrow Avenue, Weymouth, Mass, Massachusetts. So. That's kind of fun. I do like when things are personalized and gives a little history to the piece. Uh, so this is a sterling silver piece. I think the sterling is just this front piece and maybe not the expandable bracelet. I'm going to have to test it. Overhand Pittman and Keeler, I think that says. So yeah, just a really sweet heart engraved with these little blue, they look to be aquamarine color rhinestones with this sterling bar adorable. I do like these expansion style bracelets. I've seen them mainly in gold tone, so it's kind of fun to see a silver uh, version. And then next there was a few of these gold filled Victorian style bracelets. Um, I have a, a few of these in my collection already. I really like the style of this one. This is one I've never seen before. You have these sort of rectangular pieces that are in more of a rose gold color or copper color. It does have clasp there as well as a safety chain. Let's see if this one is marked anywhere. I don't think so. So this one does not appear to be marked anywhere but really really cool. I think this one is gold filled and I believe that all four of these are gold filled. This one has personalization on it. Betty but there's an E at the end. I've never seen that spelling. Betty with an E. Yeah, and this one is marked gold filled. It's gonna be really hard to pick it up on camera. 1 20th, 12 karat gold filled. They do show somewhere, especially to the back side of the bracelet that would have been 
you know, the bottom part of your wrist that would have been hitting surfaces, but they're still really beautiful. And I know people do like to collect these types of bracelets. And then we have this really interesting snake bangle. In the photos, I thought that this was a gold tone metal, um, but when I um, opened up the lot, it's actually a plastic. I think this is celluloid maybe, um, but it's so interesting. We've got this paint on the outside here. We have our little snake head with the gold paint and green eyes. How interesting. I've never seen anything quite like this. I've seen these done in gold and like a gold filled style, but never done in this celluloid version. I thought that was so interesting. So cool. No idea of the era or time period that something like this would have been made, uh, but he's really cool. And now these pieces clearly went together. Uh, we've got these really beautiful glass cabochon stones in these sort of jewel tone colors. Really, really cool. And this cuff bracelet here is a silver tone metal. I don't see any maker's marks on either of these pieces, and I think that they're just like a, a pot metal, but they're really interesting. This might be something worth Google lensing and seeing if anything pops up. Um, I've never seen these pieces before, but very, very interesting little set. Then we have another expansion bracelet with this really pretty mother of pearl center heart. Again, probably gold filled or gold tone. This one's actually in pretty nice condition. Next, we have this really beautiful gold tone bracelet with these blue, almost pyramid, like a rounded pyramid cut. If you see how high those sit up, beautiful blue color. I'm assuming glass. And then this metal, I don't see a marking anywhere. It does look suspiciously like gold, but seeing as there's no markings anywhere, um, it's probably just a gold tone. I certainly will test it, but could be a gold plated piece or gold filled as well. But typically that is marked too. So I'm not sure, but really beautiful. I love the glass in this piece. So pretty. And here's another really interesting one. So we have some blue faceted stones, which I'm assuming again are glass, and then some beautiful carved cameos. And these are shell, it could be stone. It could be some sort of hard stone. It's either a, like an agate or a shell. Um, I'm not sure actually, now that I'm looking at it, uh, but they are a carved cameo on this sort of filigree wire worked metal, which I don't know that if this is sterling or if it is just a silver tone metal, um, not marked anywhere. And it does show a little bit of wear. So probably, probably not sterling, but really beautiful. I love the look of this piece. The little cameos are beautiful. Then here is a gold tone and pearl, almost like a panel or link style bracelet with three rows of really beautiful faux pearls. Here's what the back of this looks like, just gold tone. But I think the look of this is really, really nice. This would look beautiful stacked with some other gold bracelets. Really pretty. And here we have some gorgeous light blue glass uh, square and round, really beautiful cabochon stones. You can see it has this book chain style link. And the clasp here is a fold over. Really beautiful. And next we have this bracelet again, some really beautiful pieces of glass, kind of this orange coral color with these beautiful stripes meant to simulate genuine stone. We have some faux pearls, so nice. Show what the back looks like. Again, we have that book chain style construction, hold over clasp, no markings. That's a, a nice statement bracelet, I think. Really, really nice, I actually think. These two look quite cool together. So we have this carved cameo ring in that beautiful silver tone filigree metal setting. Definitely needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Um, and there is a marking on here. 
but I believe it says 800. So I believe this is 800 silver with a beautiful carved cameo. And here we have a really large glass or amethyst stone ring on some silver toned metal. Also needs to be cleaned up. This is a chunky, very chunky, very heavy ring. Would need to test the metal here. It doesn't look like sterling to me. It's got sort of like that grayish hint to it, but I'm not sure. So it will need to be tested. I'm popping in here quickly to say that I actually did test this metal and it is sterling. So this is a really heavy sterling ring. Um, so I, I don't know if this is an amethyst or if it's glass. Again, I need to get a presidium. It is something I'm planning to purchase for myself for Christmas. So hopefully within the next month or so, I will be able to test some stones. But yeah, this is actually sterling. So this is a lot of sterling, um, a really heavy, beautiful piece. And then we've got a whole handful of these spoon rings. And I did look and most of them are actually marked sterling. And this one is interesting because it's not just like a cut spoon, like you see this one here, clearly this was cut off of the end of a utensil. This one has, you know, really pretty top and filigree at the other side of the band. And this one is marked sterling. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it down in there, um, but it is marked sterling right here. So Wallace sterling. So I think this one may have actually been manufactured this way. So created for a ring, um, meant to sort of look like the spoon jewelry. So kind of interesting. This one's really, really nice, I think. But yeah, these will all need to be tested uh, because I think there's a few silver plated and then a few actual sterling ones. Yeah, so some really fun spoon rings. Okay, now on to this tray. So here we have these really large carved pieces. And I think that these might be Bakelite as well. These are buttons, really big. Um, I think that this is Bakelite. So I'm gonna test these as well, but these are really cool. Nice, large buttons. Okay, and here we have some type of metal that is marked 1911. Um, I'm not sure what this symbol is for. I see a C, an I, and an O as well as the double A's there. So I'm not sure. Um, okay, and it is engraved on the back. 440 yard dash, one by W.L. Horlin, Horbrin? <laughs> I don't know, I'm not sure what the last name, I see an H-O-R-O-B-I-M. Uh, but there is some sort of little stamping down at the bottom. I'm not sure. I highly doubt that this is actually gold, uh, but I do think this is like a gold medal, <laughs> meaning somebody took first place in this 440 yard dash. Uh, probably plated though, but really cool. I'm gonna have to look this up. I know that people collect things like this, um, especially if there's an affiliation with whatever this organization is. Um, so interesting, definitely an older piece of ribbon here and metal. Another kind of random <laughs> item out of the slot is this really cute little bell. So this is a little baby like teething ring that has a bell. So, you know, birth record, month and year is May 16th, 1961 or 67, eight pounds, 14 ounces. <laughs> William, oh, and there is a sterling marking there. Uh, so we have this mother of pearl like teething ring and a little sterling silver bell. That's quite sweet. Um, sorry, William, I don't know why I have your bell, but here it is. That's cute. So we have this set of clips. Is this a sweater clip, perhaps? These do look sterling to me. Um, there is a marking here, and this actually says Holland. So it doesn't say sterling, um, it says Holland on it, which is interesting to me, um, but I believe that this that these are sweater clips. Beautiful filigree work on those. We'll have to test the metal. Now here's a gorgeous piece of faceted glass with a dragon or a griffin on it. How cool. I absolutely love that figural dragon there. He's so interesting. Um, here's what the back of this one looks like. This looks maybe like a Czechoslovakian glass piece as well. 
I'm not sure. I love him though. Absolutely so cool. Here's a really sweet brushed gold tone locket. We have a little bit of the rose and uh, green colored gold there as well. Not marked. Let's see, it does open up here. I don't see any markings though for metal content or a maker, which is kind of interesting. So I'm gonna assume that this is like a gold plated or a gold filled piece, just because it you would expect it to be marked. And I do see, you know, a little bit of wear in places that I wouldn't expect to see if this was, for instance, like a solid gold piece. But not sure, we'll still have to test it. It's a really pretty little pendant with a green stone. This is either glass or like a jade nephrite stone. Um, oh, and it is marked on the back. I believe that is for sterling. So we've got a sterling pendant, the beautiful green stone. I'm not sure if this chain is sterling. Um, it doesn't really look it to me but would need to be tested. People put pendants on all sorts of chains. This doesn't mean that this was its original chain, but that's a pretty pendant. Okay, now this necklace is absolutely stunning. This is so gorgeous. Here we have a beautiful sterling silver and marcasite necklace. And I do think we're missing a few marcasites. That happens with marcasite. These stones are pretty easily lost. Um, but so it doesn't really bother me. I would still wear this. Um, we have these beautiful floral links. Um, let's take a look at the clasp here. We have just a spring ring clasp. I believe it's marked sterling there. Uh, looks like there's a little bit of an extender chain added <laughs> um, in brass, but oh, I absolutely love this necklace. These are gorgeous. Let's see what the back of these look like. Oh yeah, needs to be cleaned a little, but that is certainly silver. You can tell just by looking at the metal that that is sterling. I'm gonna assume this is deco 1920s era. Could be wrong, again, I'm learning, so correct me if you know different. Oh, look at how beautiful this piece is. Ugh, some beautiful faceted stones. We've got these beautiful rectangular cut pieces and they go all up the chain. Oh, that is so beautiful. It looks like the clasp has, needs to be reattached, but it is actually marked sterling. It's gonna be so hard to make it out right up at the top here. So this is sterling, these gorgeous prong set stones. And I shared a necklace very similar to this in a recent video. And some of you in the comments were really kind enough to suggest that it might be rock crystal um, in this pendant. And that, that could be true for these as well. I almost think that the round faceted stones might be rock crystal and, but maybe not these, just they have like a different color to them, which could just be the cut of the stone. I'm not sure, uh, would need to test it, but this is so beautiful, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous necklace, love it. This one is really interesting. So we have these beautiful floral and leaf design pieces on the silver link chain. This one has a really strange clasp. I'm. It's like a button, <laughs> it's like a snap button closure, which I mean, that's nice. It's probably much easier to put on um, than a spring ring, but yeah. And I see some verdigris on the chain, so I'm not quite sure if that is silver or a silver tone metal. The little leaf pieces do look, hmm, there's really not much tarnish on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is probably just silver tone. I will test it, of course, but really beautiful. I love the little floral and leaf elements on it. That's beautiful. Ugh, this one's beautiful as well. Beautiful red foil-backed rhinestones with some white rhinestones down. Ugh, look at that. That's gorgeous. I do think, yeah, we're missing a rhinestone there. And yeah, we're missing a few rhinestones. The white ones though, which are a little bit easier to replace. Um, here is the chain, got a nice thick oops, chain. Here is the clasp. I don't see a marking anywhere um, for strolling or anything, so I'm not quite sure. Here's what the back looks like. Oh, 
Yeah, so just a costume necklace, I believe, but it's really beautiful. I think once the, some of those white stones are replaced, this is a beautiful statement piece. Beautiful. And here's a little pendant that is without its chain, but this sure looks sterling to me. It's a really interesting design that I'm not familiar with, but we've got, you know, like a rope pattern going on, this beautiful like floral or leaf design, some etching down at the bottom, sort of a fleur-de-lis there. So there's a lot of elements in this little pendant. Um, really interesting. Definitely going to test the metal on this. I'm 90% sure that it's sterling though, just based on the feel and look, weight of it, it's fairly heavy. Then here's another one that might be sterling, um, definitely needs to be cleaned up, but you have this beautiful cross. Here's the back. Don't see any markings on it. Yeah, not sure, definitely would have to test the metal there, but that's beautiful. It's a nice large cross. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful amethyst glass, I believe. Oh, this is gorgeous. So we have this cube. This is just one really long strand, by the way. I just have it doubled up here. These beautiful cube pieces with these gorgeous gold breast end caps. We have our round pieces and then some faceted glass as well. This is gorgeous. I do think it's glass versus actual amethyst, just especially these larger pieces. Yeah, those definitely look like glass to me. Beautiful. That's gorgeous. Here we have a dried flower set in glass. There is an etching. It does say 86 and some initials, I believe. So probably 1986, I'm gonna imagine. So I don't think this is necessarily an antique piece, but what do I know? <laughs> it's really beautiful. I like these little glass encased pieces. I have a few butterfly wing type pieces like this. And this is just a really beautiful dried flower. Looks like a snowflake almost. It's very sweet. Okay, and then here we have another beautiful guilloche enamel piece. The black enamel surround definitely has seen better days, but that central piece looks really, really good, actually. And this, oh, I think this is a locket. Yep, let's try to open this up. Oh, yep, oh, and we do have photos. Yeah, so definitely like a gold filled that is wearing, or gold plated. Some beautiful couples. <laughs> portraits there. I can't tell what date, maybe 60s, maybe earlier. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of bad with that. <laughs> you guys let me know if that looks earlier. Um, really cool. That's beautiful. This was loved. This was well loved. Definitely has a history to it. And here's a pair of earrings. These are cool. Hook style dangle earrings with this beautiful glass, some red rhinestones and some faux pearls. Missing one faux pearl, but that's probably an easy fix. Yeah, just like a brass tone metal. Pretty. And here we have a watch fob piece. Um, there is some sort of name, probably the manufacturer name. Uh, but it looks to be gold filled, maybe. And we probably would have had a fob piece that was attached to this here, not sure. I'm gonna see if I can read this better with a loop. So this looks like it says S-C-H-W-E-I-C-H. So I'm gonna have to look that maker up, probably a gold filled watch fob. This is pretty. So here we have a gold tone tassel style necklace. So there's no clasp, you just have this open, open-ended tassel piece with these really beautiful rectangular bar links. That's pretty, and that looks to be in really good condition, actually. Here we have a monogram pendant. I'm trying to see if I can make out the letters. I see an H and I see an S. B, is it maybe B-H-S? Or B-E? I don't know, these are always really hard for me to, <laughs> to read. They usually spell out somebody's name. Um, not sure, not sure. I think this is just like a gold-plated piece. I don't see any markings on it, uh, but I'm gonna try to work out the name on this. Um, if you guys can read it, let me know. Comment below and let me know what this says. Uh, they're kind of fun to try to work out, honestly. I am not sure. Okay, and these are the last few pieces in the lot. So 
we have this little silver tone filigree wired piece with a beautiful like fuchsia pink glass stone. We have these earrings which look to be a carved coral or it could be faux, it could be resin, um, but little rosebud stud earrings. And then look how fun this little pillow box is, I guess. It does have a bail so it could be worn as a pendant. Um, and that opens up and it's actually Avon. <laughs> So not too old of a piece, but it's really cool. Um, you have these glass stones, it's like a little treasure chest. I think it's a pillbox though, but so those were the last few pieces here in this lot. Let me know what you thought about these pieces. I think there were some absolutely incredible, incredible items in this. The Bakelite bracelet was the reason I purchased it, but these Art Nouveau pins over here, I absolutely love the citrine one with the marcasites. Just, that's so beautiful. I didn't even see that in the lot. You know, some of these necklaces over here are, are fantastic. I do like this little pin and I'm excited to learn more about her. This little painted one, so beautiful. So yeah, I, I know that this lot was kind of expensive, but I actually do think it was worth it. I do think I could get my money back if I were to sell these items. Um, and I'm really happy to add a lot of them to my collection. So thank you so much for spending the time going through this with me. If you recognize any of these pieces or have any information to share uh, with me and with the rest of the YouTube community watching this video, please leave me a comment down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you like jewelry and you like seeing these types of hauls. I will be back soon with some more jewelry for you. Thanks so much and I will see you in the next one.